We happen to know a lot about the development process of Sonic 2 because several unfinished prototypes have been discovered over the years, but that's not the case with Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Outside of magazine articles giving us a taste of what the game looked like, we would never see a Sonic 3 prototype surface. Until recently. Let's take a look. What's going on? It's Poger coming at you with another video. Well, we did it. We hit 20,000 subscribers. I didn't think it would happen so quickly. It was less than a year. I thought I had at least a couple more videos before we got there. I wanted to thank you, the viewer, for helping me get there. Without you, I wouldn't be here today. And it feels great that there's a whole community of viewers who enjoy my videos. Thank you for helping me get to 20,000 subscribers. And we do have a Discord community, just go to discord.poger.net. I'm also going to put a link right in the description. Anyway, let's talk about the Sonic 3 prototype. So what exactly is a prototype when it comes to video games? It's an unfinished game that gives you a proof of concept. The levels might not be done yet, the game might still have some bugs, and the developers may decide to make changes if they no longer like an idea. Prototype cartridges almost never have any fancy artwork and look very minimalistic. After all, they're not for commercial use, they're just for the developers. Sometimes prototypes can be played by the public though. Sometimes an unfinished version of a game will be shown at a convention. In the case of Sonic 3D Blast, a prototype version was shown at E3 just to show consumers what the game is like. This was an unfinished version of the game that was missing most of the music in all of the special stages. Sometimes prototype versions of games are shown in magazine articles. Sonic 1, for example, featured all kinds of artwork that didn't make the final game. Magazines can really tell a story on the development process of a game, and sometimes that's all we have to go on. While prototype footage is sometimes shown to the public, they're not meant to be released. Like I mentioned before, they're unfinished games. They're only meant to stay with the developers. But many prototypes have been discovered by the public, and in many cases the ROMs were dumped. Sometimes this can happen because the prototypes were stolen, or maybe the developers released them, or maybe they were found by accident. Several prototypes of Sonic 2 were found over the years that gave us a lot of information on the development process. The Nick Arcade prototype is a very early build of the game that reuses music from Sonic 1 and most of the levels are not fully playable. The Simon Y prototype added original music and contains more playable levels, but still nowhere near complete. It's fortunate that we found so many Sonic 2 prototypes, but unfortunately this was not the case with Sonic 3. We didn't have a lot of information on the development process of the game. Prior to the release of Sonic 3, some magazines did feature gameplay screenshots of the prototype version. In Sega Magazine, we see Sonic riding a surfboard, which he doesn't do in the final game. We also see glitchy artifacts above it, which further proves that this is prototype footage. And we also see red spheres on the bottom right. I believe this was to test out the upcoming special stage. The screenshots in this magazine, though, are interesting. Here, we can see Ice Cap Zone, but Sonic is running down the slope, which he doesn't do in the final game. And also notice that Sonic looks like he does in Sonic 2, so they didn't give him a redesign yet. In this snippet, we get three gameplay screenshots, all of which show Sonic 2 sprites. But the middle picture is the most interesting. Look at Hydro City Zone. Appearance-wise, it looks much different from the final game. Unfortunately, this is all we have. No prototypes of the game were found, so we don't have much to go off of. But we're not done, because there's a few oddities I wanted to point out in the final game. Sonic 3 was originally going to be a single game, but due to time constraints, Sega would choose to split the game into two, which was a very odd decision. Sonic 3 would feature the first six zones, while Sonic & Knuckles would contain the last six. By locking both cartridges together, you're playing the full game. The first oddity I wanted to point out is Flying Battery Zone. Despite only being in Sonic & Knuckles, the level is listed directly under Carnival Night Zone in Sonic 3 when you use the level select code, although you can't actually go there. The levels are otherwise in order from top to bottom. Flying Battery Zone also has a couple other oddities. It's the only level in the game that doesn't have any Knuckles exclusive areas. Normally the levels would have areas that only Knuckles can climb to. Speaking of Knuckles, when fighting the boss, Dr. Robotnik isn't disguised like he's supposed to be. In the other levels, he wears a metal hat to keep Knuckles from knowing it's him. 
So why does Flying Battery Zone have all these weird oddities? Many fans believe that Flying Battery Zone was supposed to be the next level after Carnival Night Zone. It's also believed that Knuckles was not supposed to play this level, which explains why there's no areas for him to roam around in and why Dr. Robotnik wasn't changed. Let's talk about the music. Sega originally hired Michael Jackson to compose music for the game, but he left the project shortly after. Three levels in the game contained music that he worked on. To avoid potential copyright issues, the PC version of Sonic 3 replaced the music for those three stages. Here's an example. This is the original version for reference. With this in mind, it seems like Sega made these new renditions after the fact to avoid copyright issues. Unfortunately, we have very little information on the development process of Sonic 3. We have a few magazine cutouts and a few oddities in the final game, but that's it. However, in 2019, this would all change. In November of 2019, the owner of HiddenPalace.org, DRX, released a ROM for a Sonic 3 prototype. DRX has found numerous other prototypes in the past, and it's not exactly known how he pulls it off, but he has some amazing connections. Thanks to his effort, we now have the first ever publicly released prototype of Sonic 3. The title screen is much more basic looking than the final game with a solid blue background. You're immediately prompted to a level select screen without the requirement of putting in a code, which is common with prototypes. This allows developers to test out the game quicker. The first stage cutscene shows Sonic surfing in the water, which is unusual. Knuckles taunts him, but doesn't steal his Chaos Emeralds like he does in the final game. All the acts from Sonic 3 are playable, which makes me think this prototype was made shortly after Sega made the decision to split this game into two. Flying Battery Zone is actually on here despite being a Sonic & Knuckles exclusive level, although it's in a very unfinished state. This further supports the theory that this level was supposed to be after Carnival Night Zone. Sonic & Tails' sprites were ripped from Sonic 2, just like we saw in the magazine screenshots. When Tails carries Sonic, his animation is very strange. He seems to have extremely long legs. Tails can also move vertically much faster than he can in the final game. Hydro City Zone looks shockingly different, just like we saw in the magazine picture before. The game is definitely unfinished. When you complete some Act 1 bosses, the game does not bring you to Act 2, so you have to reset. In Carnival Night Zone Act 1, the boss area is floating in the air and doesn't move like it does in the final game. When I defeated the boss, the game stopped and I was not able to progress. In Launch Base Zone, after the Knuckles cutscene, the game softlocked and I was not able to advance further. Thank god the level select is activated by default. In Ice Cap Zone, Sonic does not have his snowboard, so he's just running down the hill, just like we saw in that picture. There's some small graphical glitches throughout the prototype. Sonic doesn't have a victory pose, so when he completes a stage, he looks shocked. That's pretty funny. When Sonic hangs on a conveyor belt, it shows his side sprite because there was no front sprite yet. There's also some collision related issues. In Ice Cab Zone, when going down a slope, I got stuck inside a wall and I was not able to get out. Tails' flying ability is also glitchy. A few times, Sonic randomly got stuck in the air and I couldn't do anything. I had to reset. The game also doesn't have a final boss yet. When you defeat Robotnik's first form, you can ride the flying machine like normal and Knuckles even makes an appearance, but the game softlocks shortly after. There's a few aspects that are not here yet, like the special stages. When you pick the special stage option in the level select, it brings you to a bunch of rotating red spears similar to the ones we saw in the magazine picture. The bonus levels are also in very early development and are not playable. While Knuckles does make an appearance in the cutscenes, he's not a playable character. But he wasn't in the final game either, unless you had Sonic and Knuckles. There's one amazing discovery that was found in this prototype. For the most part, the music is similar to the final game but with some very small instrumental changes, but there is one big change. Remember how the PC version of Sonic 3 received new tracks for three of the stages? These tracks were used in the prototype. Yeah, that's right. These new tracks were not new at all. They also sound fantastic. We never got to hear the renditions like these until now. Here's an example.
Here's what it sounds like in the final game. Before this prototype, we had no idea the music from the PC version was in fact the original music. This could mean that maybe Michael Jackson wasn't involved until later in the game's development. Overall, this prototype is about 75% complete. All of the levels are here and mostly playable except Flying Battery Zone. But the special stages are not here yet, the flying mechanics need some work, and there's a lot of glitches. It's really cool to finally have access to a real Sonic 3 prototype more than 20 years later. Over the years, many Sonic 2 prototypes have been found, so we know a lot about the development process of that game. But Sonic 3 had mainly been a mystery. All we had to go off of were the magazine pictures and some of the oddities in the final game. But more than 20 years later, we would finally learn about one of the best Sonic games. Hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, hit that like button. If you enjoy this type of content, hit the subscribe button for more content. Both of these things really help the channel grow. If you have anything to share, feel free to leave a comment. I read every single comment on this channel, and I'm pretty good at replying back. Anyway, have a good one.